Today's topic kind of mirrors two things that I enjoy. One is gardening and one obviously is meteorology. Um, we're going to do some demonstrations of some things you guys can do at home to kind of uh, grow some plants inside. Uh, I am not a master gardener, so I'm not going to pretend to know everything there is about plants. But um, when I grew up, we always had a garden. And I think in these times when people are going to be stuck at home, gardening is going to make a huge comeback. Plus, you can generate your own food at home, which is always an added bonus. And there's a lot of great science involved with this um, with the kids involved and weather is a huge tie into this so one of the biggest things about understanding how plants work is you got to understand the whole process of photosynthesis now photosynthesis takes moisture and nutrients from the soil um, sunlight and chlorophyll in the plants leaves and creates sugar believe it or not yeah kids vegetables and fruits are full of sugars now there's different types of sugars but that's what the plant is generating and the output is actually oxygen now there is carbon dioxide it takes in so that's the great thing about plants they take in carbon dioxide and they push out oxygen and sugar which are two things that human beings love so today we're going to talk about growing some plants at home and how the weather impacts us so i'm gonna go full screen i'm gonna back up here um, hopefully you guys can still hear me um, to my left here is actually uh, what we call a tower garden this is actually a hydroponic garden that we have here at the house and the cool thing about this this grows all these plants without any soil we're going to show you some ways you can grow, uh, grow plants with soil and some cool things you can do at home now a lot of you are stuck at home obviously if you can't get to the hardware store to get seeds believe it or not if you have fresh produce at home vegetables and fruit, you can take the seeds out of those and grow new plants. Now you need to wash the seeds thoroughly and then dry them thoroughly. So make sure you do that um, before you plant them. Anything frozen or anything that has, um, has been bleached is probably not gonna work. Those seeds won't germinate. So make sure you're using fresh fruit. My son loves to take apple seeds and try to grow apple trees in the backyard. So one of the first things uh, that we're going to do is we're going to use um, beans, dried beans. Now again, uh, this is a great thing you can do at home with the kids. I know a lot of them try to, try to do this in school. So I'm going to bring my kids in, Kyler and Kinley, and our dog Hawk will be walking around in the background. So you guys have done this before. One cool thing you can do at home to show how plants grow is take dried beans. Again, they can't be bleached, they can't be frozen. Um, the dried bean seeds will work good. And Kyler, I think you did this in school, didn't you? So one of the things you can do is use small Ziploc bags. Um, take some paper towels right there's a piece Kyler you hold one I'm gonna give you a bag I'm gonna give Kinley a bag and a paper towel and what you want to do is grab one bean guys you just got one bean okay you're gonna get one bean okay you're going to take the paper towel we got to wet it first but you can put the paper towel in first before before you get it wet so put it in the bag and you can smush it in there so at home if you've got um, if the bag doesn't fit the paper towel exactly, you can smush it up a little bit. The whole point is to, is to fold it up and put it in there. You want to take either a spray bottle or something that doesn't dump a ton of water in here. Moisten that paper towel up like that. You guys do that. Okay. You're going to take your bean, which is a dried bean. Um, you could do any seed actually, but beans work really well because they have a big bean. They have some um, some resources already in the, the bean. Think of it as like an egg. Um, there's some um, nutrients already in there to get this to germinate. Put it in the bag against the wet thing. Now you don't want to zip this up because remember photosynthesis, what do we need? We need sunlight. Uh, no, we need carbon dioxide to get in there. It's going to release oxygen. So you want to leave this open. So what you can do is take tape. Um, I would I would highly recommend you use some kind of painter's tape, uh, masking tape that's going to peel very easily because you're going to stick this to your window. Um, so what you're going to do is peel off some tape and you can take this now the, the key part of this, I'm going to come over to the camera a little bit, guys. Excuse me. The key part of this is to not close the bag, but to put the tape on one side of the bag like this and then tape this to the window that's facing south. You got to get a lot of sunlight. Sunlight is the key part here. If you put this in the window and have this face out and keep this moist, you might keep that spray bottle around the sprayed in there. Over time, this will actually germinate. 
So we'll put it up like that and the kids can do this and they can watch it over the next couple of weeks because you're going to be at home, obviously, and it's going to germinate. You will see the root come out, you'll see the stem come out, and you'll actually be able to go outside and plant this. But the fact that kids can watch this at home is pretty cool. Now, that's a cool experiment to do with the kids, but if you actually want to grow something outside, um, I know a lot of you have a ton of these. Kyler, you stockpile these, but right now people have a ton of these right now. You can use paper towel rolls. These make good starter kits for, um, for plants because what you can do is I'll show you a real quick trick is you can cut these in half, okay? So you get something that looks like a Dixie cup, like a small paper Dixie cup. Cut maybe one inch little notches in the bottom, about four of them, and I'll come over here. And what you're going to do is once you cut those notches is fold the bottom in like this. You're basically making like a little cup. Okay. And the reason you're doing that. So you see the bottom now I cut that and I folded the ends in to make a little cup. We're going to take some of the soil. Kinley, you want to put some soil in there? Scoop some of that dirt out for me. If you can, you might get dirty. I don't want your dress to get dirty, but you might get a little dirty. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay this is the great thing about this with the kids they can get their hands on and get it dirty so we're going to put some dirt in there i'll grab some too we're going to fill it up um, we have some some pumpkin seeds right we can stick the pumpkin seed in here bury it with some more dirt um, water this and then put it in some kind of tray thanks bud put it in some kind of tray so either, you, a lot of people use egg cartons, which are a great way to recycle, um, but you can take any kind of plastic tray because the whole key part of this is you want there to be drainage here. So when you water these, and you can put these in your house and then put this near the window, or, out, or I wouldn't put it outside yet, put it near the window where it's gonna get sun, these will sprout. And what you can do, the cool thing about using these paper towel rolls is you can actually take this, once it starts to sprout, go outside and transplant this in the ground, and you can leave it inside this cardboard too because this will biodegrade. Now you might want to rip it a little more to get it going, but because it's got a hole in the bottom and it's just uh, cardboard, don't use the white ones. If you can find these natural ones, these work a little bit better. You can actually uh, stick them right in the ground and actually um, start to grow them. Now, another way you can start plants inside is with little Dixie cups. Um, but the key part here is you need good drainage. So take a pencil or some kind of, uh, maybe something not too sharp that the kids can use and poke some holes in the bottom. So you want some holes in the bottom like that. You can fill this with soil as well. You want to put a seed in there? There's roly polies in there. There's a roly poly in there? Yeah, that's good no, though. There's like no in there. <laughs> you can take these as well. Same thing, water these thoroughly with either a spray bottle or a little bit of water and stick them in a tray and then stick this in a window. The key part is the southern part of your house. Now, why is the southern part of your house important? Well, this is another cool thing about weather that I love is the sun here in the northern hemisphere is always in the southern sky. So it's gonna rise in the east, stay in the southern sky and set in the west. So that's the side of your house that gets the most sun. And if you ever wanna know if you're out and about and you don't have a compass or you want to figure out if the wind's coming from the south, there's a cool little trick you can do. Uh, leaves on trees, deciduous trees, will always try to face to the south because they're trying to maximize the sunlight. Think of them as mini solar panels. So they're trying to get the most sun. So if you see the leaves facing this direction, you know that's the southern sky. And sometimes when I'm out and about and I want to know if there's a south wind, the wind will blow the leaf up and you'll see the underside of the leaf. That's a, a sign that you have southerly winds. So plants can tell you a lot about what's going on in nature. But these are just some of the things you can do at home to get these plants growing. It's always a good idea to start the seeds inside, especially now because I'll caution you, um, coming up late next week, there's potential for a frost still. So it's a little early to put the vegetables and fruits in because vegetables, uh, especially tomatoes, cucumbers, they're very susceptible to frost. Typically they like really really warm conditions. Tomato plants in particular love heat and humidity. They will grow great down here. But the other good reason to start it in early is not only frost, is that new saplings, what do we have in our yard every night? Deer. Deer. All right, deer and rabbits, they love fresh growth. 
uh, animals will eat them. Now, even after you start growing these, you're going to have to deal with deer and animals eating them. But the fresh growth in particular, um, a really, really juicy and delicious to a lot of animals. Squirrels and chipmunks will even dig these up in birds because they like that fresh sapling or that fresh um, plant growing up. So start these inside, get them going good. And then in a week or two, once we're past that first frost or freeze, you can actually put them outside. April 15th is the rule here in Charlotte. That's the rule I use, tax day rule. 98% of all our last frost or freezes have happened on or before April 15th. So if you want to be 100% sure, you got to wait till May because our latest freeze is in early May. But most of the time you're going to be okay after about April 15th. So just a couple things you guys can do at home to get out in the garden, um, start growing your plants. It's a great lesson of how photosynthesis works how nutrients in the soil, water work, but also how the weather impacts all this. Sunlight is key, warm temperatures, and frequent rainfall. A lot of folks always wonder if it's the sunlight that gets these growing, it's actually the temperature. When the soil temperature gets into the 50s, that's when stuff will start to grow. So just a couple of tips that uh, you guys can do at home and get your bags up today. I love to see these hanging in everybody's windows and then we'll see how long this takes to sprout. How long do you think this will take, guys? Mm, for like weeks. a month. Two or three. three weeks days i'm thinking like days but make sure it's facing the southern sky so just as a really cool project you can do easily today and go find some seeds i bet you have some at home um if you don't head to the head to the hardware store those are open because those are part of our essential stores out there and tape them up against your window so something fun to do